Good morning world and it is a beautiful day today on the GC as you can see blue skies no clouds I am actually feeling really well this morning and I thought I'd actually share it with you guys you know when I was younger I um I never really believed in God or Jesus um, I never really believed that Jesus was crucified and um, died for us. I never believed any of that. But in my later life, and I don't know whether it's, I've had a bit of surrounding mortality lately that I've changed my mind, but I just want to share an experience that I had this morning with you all. And when I woke up this morning, I was greeted with a lovely cup of well, a hot latte and a sausage and egg muffin. And just prior to this being greeted with, I was listening to 96.5, which is a family radio station for the GC, the Gold Coast. And on it um, was this sermon about um, being selfish. And I really thought about it, and excuse me, took this to heart because you're all probably aware because I do sort of speak my feelings um, I haven't been speaking with my husband for the last few weeks and that's because we've both been very stretched and we've both been quite selfish but oh, sorry my eyes are a bit sore this morning but I'm talking about me now so not about my husband I have been selfish and I haven't been thinking straight and so Along with him, he was the better person. I went to him and I said, thank you very much for my breakfast. It was beautiful. And I'm sorry for being selfish. So we're now both talking again. And I hope that we can move forward. Our relationship, probably in the last year or so, has been different. I think it's because we've both grown as individuals. Excuse me. And we've both accepted that we need to move on from the past and it's not going to change the past, but we are two different people. So I did want to share that with you all this morning because <laughs> it's a breakthrough. And it's a beautiful breakthrough. I guess I'm not one to push anything on anyone. I'm not those, not those sales reps, and I'm not a religious fiend that comes knocking at your door. I'm not one of those people. So by no means am I trying to convince anyone out there that there is God and He does exist. But I truly believe it. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And I'm not, as I said, not selling anything. It's because. Since, I don't know whether it's been since my spinal injury that it is because I haven't been working so I haven't put time aside and I haven't sat down and think about things before because I was in a rush, I was like, getting it to work, I had to work, I came home and I'd have to, you know, it, so it was a busy lifestyle. I think a lot more now that I'm not well and I'm in my bedroom all day because I'm in pain. I do believe there is God. And I truly believe he sent me this message this morning saying that put your indifferences aside, stop being selfish and tell your husband you love him because he did the same to me and he took that first step. And, you know, I don't think we both realise that. We both have a lot to deal with, me with my pain and himself with his masters um, you know he's doing a master's degree now in security and counter-terrorism I'm so proud of him um, you know he's a 55 year old man 56 year old man and this is where he's got to today and he did this to start with because while he was looking for work he thought I'll stuff it I'll do it I'll do something I'll go to uni you know, and, and try and do that. And then if I get a job, excellent. I can, you know, do the uni degree and, and work at the same time. 
no job came about, but a degree came about in security and, and, and counter-terrorism. Now he's doing his master's in it. And I'm very proud of him. Um, I mean, I recently did my business degree in, and I'm, um, in human resources as well, so I'm proud of myself, but more, more proud of him for who he is. So I did want to share that with you, the, with you all this morning. Yippee, I'm jumping up, clicking my heels at the moment. We're back to normal, but it is going to take more work and it will take continued work for us as a, as a husband and wife. And I think that's what I was trying to say before. Over the past year, we do recognise this and we've said it to each other. Um, we are two different people now. We're unlike what we were. We do communicate, even though sometimes we're both a little selfish and stubborn. But I, um, I accept that about myself. I was acting selfish and I was being stubborn. But now that I've recognised it, I have to try and do something about it. So, And that I will. So, in saying that, I want to ask you guys, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, please hit my like if you end up watching my video. And if you haven't done already, subscribe. Hit that ding along bell down below next to the subscribe button as well and I'll send you a notification right into your notification inbox when I upload another video. I've also, um, talking a bit more because I did want to talk about something else this morning, I just wasn't sure what, but that actually came up so I thought what a great opportunity too. But I do want to also discuss that I've also got other platforms as well, Facebook, that I'm also on, which I upload my videos to. I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, Nextbeat. I don't really know a lot about Twitch and Nextbeat though, unfortunately. I am learning a little bit about that. I think it's more so of a live feed sort of thing. Um, and of course, YouTube. Um, I'm not sure whether anyone's getting my YouTubes. I did a search last night for depression, anxiety and all that. None of mine came up. So I'm assuming that's what they mean by demonetizing stuff. If I'm not reaching the 4,000 viewing hours and the 1,000 subscriber list, I'm assuming that they're not going to prioritize my channel and they're not going to make sure that my, um, if anyone searches depression, anxiety, pain or whatever, that my stuff's not going to come up. So all good. That's why I'm using other platforms to now advertise um, and Google Plus. But I'm not too up to speed on Google Plus, Nextbeat and Twitch. So I've got to find out a bit more about that today. I've decided I am going to buy myself a sewing machine and my mother had a whole chest full of um, fabric. So I'm going to buy myself a little um, machine and I'm going to do my best to make um, shopping bags. So people can take their shopping bags along, like to places like Aldi and on the Gold Coast now on in June, July, I think it's going to happen. They're going to stop giving out um, plastic bags. You're going to have to bring your own. You can purchase their disposable ones at a certain cost. But the point is, they're not going to give you grey shopping bags anymore. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I can get into that same monopoly and um, and make these bags out of these fabrics. So I'm going to give it a go. Um, of course, I don't know how I'm going to go sitting for too long and how long it's going to last for. And I don't certainly want to um, create any more problems with my back. So, and I'll discuss it another day. I've had some questions in relation to my bulging discs and my impingements of nerves, etc., etc. When I get my report back, I'm due for another MRI in July, so I'm going to wait till I have that and then I'll be able to update you guys on that. Another thing I do want to discuss is health insurance. Okay, so we as a family were with, we still are with Medibank Private or Medibank. We pay for the top cover. There's no excess and there is um, top cover. So we all purchase our glasses for reading every couple of years. I'll show you my pair that I got last two years ago. I've actually just in time for some other ones. I just, I had to suspend my membership. For the simple fact is um, I couldn't afford $800 a month. That's how much it was costing me. 
Um, I don't know whether I'm going to have to look at single cover. The thing is, though, the whole family makes use of it. My daughter has a, an injury that was given that was she sustained from birth. Um, Herb's pause up, pausey, sorry, shoulder dystocia. Um, she's never been able to lift her arm higher than her um, just above her waist. Um, my um, son has asthma. My husband, he has he had an accident, which is why I'm bringing up Medibank this morning. Um, and myself, um, well, he's got, you know, other health concerns too. And well, not really. No, he hasn't because he's healthy. He's sustained a lot more of a healthier lifestyle over the last two years. He's lost a lot of weight. But I guess it was good that we had it because when we went to the family reunion in um, January, he had an accident playing volleyball. Thank God. Because, um, yeah, so he needed an operation and the waiting list was years and years. On the Gold Coast, it was a waiting list of two years. He couldn't wait that long. He was in agony. He was in pain. So it was just lucky that I said, look, go to the private hospital, see what they can offer, see what Medibank can offer. And because it was an accident, bless the Lord above, guess what? We were covered or he was covered. I've got diabetes, I've got my spinal injury, of course all pre-existing illnesses, so I have to wait out of time frame. However, I've had to put the membership on hold. So, and I have to sort that out as well, because now I get an information that I'm a month behind, but oh my God, money, 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 money. Anyway, so I've put it on hold because I really just can't afford it anymore. And the funds that I did have set aside to cover us, um, for a three year period have totally been depleted, totally. So now we're just totally living on, um, you know, what we get paid. And that's minimum, minimal. Anyway, getting back to the claim, my husband had an accident. We went to the private hospital. That was the closest thing. There was, you know, he didn't have to wait eight, nine hours to see a doctor at least. He got in straight away. You know, we paid for their consultation fees and all that. Um, anyway, cut a long story short, the operation was covered, we were told that. We filled out all the pre-existing um, um, pieces of information we had to fill out. We signed the document to say that he got this injury through an accident that he had. Now, in the actual report, it did state that he had MRI. I mean, he had um, some, um, what's the word I'm looking for, arthritis. But this had nothing to do with the injury that happened in January. It actually happened, he was playing volleyball, he fell on his knee and he tore some sort of, I don't know, something within his knee itself, a ligament, something like that. It needed to be repaired in surgery. So they took him in, they fixed it. But prior to the operation occurring, we rang, we filled out all the paperwork saying that, a stat deck basically saying that it was done through an an accident. It was an accident while being away at a family reunion. Um, it was not a pre-existing illness. Anyway, the hold up now is because their consultant needs to ring the hospital and ask them for the specific case notes that the doctor would have written out the day that my husband went in to the emergency room to have his knee looked at, right? I rang the hospital. They said, we never get patient requests the actual insurer normally rings us and we send them the paperwork they need and they pay for that specific paperwork or that specific request so this was going okay it's now may the end of may this week so it's going into june so it, nearly five months five months five months people you guessed it and i'll be titling this one Medibank, <laughs> Medibank ripoff and misleading information because now I can't afford to actually pay it. It's $800 a month. Unfortunately, they have the monopoly. No other health fund that I have questioned can offer me the same as what Medicare can with no excess, no cost or penalties at all and the top cover. We're talking 300 bucks in um, each person for glasses each each year if we wanted to, but we get them every two years instead. Um, you know, diabetic machines, things like that. Um, it's quite a bit. It's quite substantial. You'd think with someone that's paying top dollar, it wouldn't take five months 
for some action to take place. We've still got anaesthetics, we've got a specialist, we've got a hospital waiting to be paid. Medibank, you should be disgusted in yourself and I'm ashamed to say that I'm a member. Anyway, I will be, I will be comparing other health funds and I'm gonna ring some of them up to say whether they can do any better. If they can, then so be it. I'll, tr I'll transfer my membership because it's absolutely disgusting that they can treat a member like this. Five months, five months, unbelievable Medicare. Where's your mind? You know, it's, you know, and, and the trouble is when I ring these people to and answer the phone, it's not their fault. So I try my darndest not to take it out on them. And today, Milan, a lovely man to speak with. He apologised, but I said to him, I don't want your apology. All I want is for this problem to be resolved. So yet again, I've asked for someone to call me back higher or the boss of this particular person in resolutions. You know, I was told probably about a month ago now that I would be called back after this person got in contact with the consultant who wanted the case notes from the emergency room. No call back, no nothing. So anyway, Medibank, you've got questions and they need to be answered. That's basically all I've got to say. So if you're out there and you're experiencing the same type of problem, think about who you're going to next and really think about whether it's going to be worth your trouble changing to another fund because I'm starting to begin beginning to think that maybe it is a better idea to actually you know forfeit maybe and get a $250 excess rather than have none and go through a five month waiting period to for the doctors to be paid when you started the claim prior to the actual surgery happening an accident and surgery they can happen very quickly so you get my point? I actioned this as quickly as possible prior to my husband having the operation. I made that effort to, to tell them to make sure we were covered because it was an accident. Anyway, it's up to you. I'm just telling you my experience. I really don't think I have anything else to discuss today. I mean, it's a beautiful day outside. I've promised my beautiful Bambi that I'm gonna take her out into the sunshine and get some rays of, of sunshine and warmth into us. I wanted to give you my experience this morning um, about selfishness and what I learnt from it and what I've achieved and what's come about it. So, and of course, Medibank. So I think that's basically it. Um, my sugar's been perfect. I'm gonna take my sugar now so I can show you. Show you what it's there and I'm just gonna, hang on. I don't know how I'm gonna show you how I do this. I'll just spin you down there. You can hear it go beep, beep, beep. And it's reminding me that I've got two hours left from this sensor. So I click OK. And it's actually a little bit high right now. Let's see why. So we'll just click it. We'll go um, review history. We will go logbook. So it's now, what, 10 something. So it was 9.3. And then that's now. And then at 9.40, it was 6.6. .6. So what it was is that um, sausage and egg McMuffin is starting to work its way up in my sugar level. So my sugar reading should be between 5 and 8. It is a bit high. My insulin's kept in the fridge. So I'm going to go downstairs now and take three units. And that should pretty much um, bring me down to within that, within that line. So... I am feeling a lot better. I have got my bariatric um, um, appointment coming up in June, so not long now, and I'm terribly excited about that. I was gonna end this, but I wanna add some more to this vlog today. I had to mainly concentrate on um, binge eating and snacks late at night. I have noticed that late at night, um, I tend to um, you know, get some cravings, so I'll go to the fridge and instead of having one or two or even one piece of small piece of fruit, I'll have six plums and four nectarines or it's overeating. So between my last appointment and now, I've had to work on that. And I am so proud to say that I have not had one craving late at night. And that's for two reasons. My pain has escalated 
and secondly um, I've been sleeping a lot more my doctor did actually increase my medication by five milligrams but then we've gone back down again to the initial um, 25 and that's because it has made no difference with controlling my pain and that's why and I'll speak to you again in another vlog about the ketamine infusion I've researched a bit more about that that's what my doctor wants me to do and I'm proud to say I'm happy to say that I have decided to go ahead with it so she's requested that the pain clinic give me a call and organize that to happen um, but I'm not going to speak any more about that today because I do feel that that's another vlog. So, guys, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that or ding my bell. And don't, and also, I should say, thumbs up when you watch my videos. So, love you guys. Um, have a wonderful day. Enjoy the sunlight and I'll chat to you again soon. Until then, love ya. Mmm. -hmm.